everyone and welcome to my presentation, Drawn to Nature. My name is Rita Braithwaite. I'm a national judge, a national speaker and a keen competitor and exhibitor. As members of the National Association of Flower Rangers, we floral artists get a super fix every time we gather plant material and we are out with it. Over the past year or so, many of us have been unable to take part in practical arranging and we've looked for other means to get our fix of art. We might perhaps have thought of doing some drawing, which is really good for us. But we may not have drawn since we were at school, which for some of us a long time ago. For me, it's a very long time ago. And we might think, well, I wouldn't know where to start. Well, if you've got a pencil and paper, you can make a start. But be warned, just as when you started flower arranging with a simple pair of scissors and a bunch of flowers, and now have umpteen cupboards and drawers full of absolute essentials with which to carry out your hobby, the same is true of drawing. I tend to gather up little treats whenever we're out and about. So we think we'll do a drawing. So we'll find a pencil and a piece of paper. Any piece of paper and any pencil will do to start off with. You might even just have a pencil that you've gathered up on a shopping expedition to that shop to get some furniture. So what might we draw? Well, we might look around us and it would be quite nice to choose something that is plant material. Perhaps we might look at our fruit bowl and consider an apple, something fairly simple, a single object. And our apple is a circular form, it's a sphere. Now, if you haven't drawn for a very long time, you may perhaps think to yourself, I don't think I could even draw a circle. Well, you can. Uh, just find yourself a circular object and draw around it a plate, a reel of ribbon, anything, just to get that basic shape. But don't push too hard because you won't want that hard line to show at the end. Now, if you're like me, as soon as you start, you'll find that you also need an eraser <laughs> and a pencil sharpener too. It's, uh, you can use a knife, but it can be a little bit dangerous. So we've got our pencil, we've got our paper, We've sharpened our pencil and we've got an eraser handy. So we look at our apple and we think the light catches to one side and the shade is at the other. And I want to give the sense of it being a 3D object on my 2D sheet of paper. So I would draw my circle, start a, a plate for the stalk to come from so that we know it's an apple and not just any sphere, a ball or similar. And we would start to draw shading using curved lines to represent the curve of our apple. And we would build up the shading, more shading to the dark side and less where the light falls and shines on the apple. It's a good idea also to put a little bit of shading beneath the apple. Um, both to give sense of it being in the shade beneath and to make it look as though it's actually sitting on something and not floating off into the wide blue yonder. Once we've done our apple perhaps a time or two with just an ordinary pencil, we might perhaps think, well, it might be nice to have some coloured pencils. Uh, we might perhaps already have some in our house or we may have grandchildren that have coloured pencils handy. So once again, we'll consider that our object has shading darker to the shady side and more emphasis where there is colour and less where there isn't colour. So we once again build up that definite sense of it being a spherical object. And so we've drawn our apple and we've played and might perhaps move on to other pieces of food from our food bowl. We might perhaps think of something else that we could draw, um, perhaps a tulip, just a, 
go for things that have got fairly uncomplicated shapes if they're not big. Um, a tulip or a daffodil, something that's got a definite shape so that you've got that sense of it actually being something recognisable. Um, you might, as I say, do a tulip and once again we want to give the sense of it curving and we would use shade and light to get this effect. We would put deeper shade towards the base of our flower where we can see that it was going to down into the ground originally and we would put lighter colouring less heavy where the light falls. You soon get the hang of it. It's, it's quite quick for that to register I think. But it can be. If you struggle with it, don't worry, just keep trying until you get there. You might perhaps think of a snowdrop from the garden. And if we want to draw a white flower, for example, a lily, on a white sheet of paper, this can present a problem. Uh, much the easier way is if you've got a piece of coloured paper, you might perhaps have a, an envelope that you received at some time. And I took the photograph of my snowdrop against the blue background so that I could see it clearly. And I've drawn it with pastel pencils. I have drawn it on a beige background, a blue background, and also on a green background. And you can see that there's a very different effect depending on the colour of the paper being used. If you find that natural flowers are really quite difficult, what can be really good fun, I thoroughly enjoy doing it, it's to do stylized, made up flowers and they can be quite simple. Um, it's nice them with colour pencils in particular, but you can do it just with black and white. And make up some fantasy flowers. They don't have to be real flowers, just represent a flower to you. One of my favourite pieces of equipment that I've acquired on my travel through my journey of trying to improve and learn to draw is a light box. A light box is a flat sheet with LED light bulbs in it so it stays cool, it's quite safe to use and you lay a photograph or a picture onto the light box with the light shining through it and then place the piece of paper over the top and you can trace the outline of the original picture. Just a thought, if you use an existing picture from anywhere, be it a book or a magazine or a picture that you've bought or a birthday card that you may have received, if you're just going to use that drawing as an inspiration purely for yourself to practice and enjoy playing at home, absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. But if there should be any chance at, at some point in the future, you might perhaps join an art group, if you want to take it a little further, um, who may put on an exhibition. And you might have even at some point decide you want to sell some work that you've done. If that is the case, then you must be absolutely certain that you are either using an image that is your own or a natural object, such as our apple or flower, or that it is a copyright free image. If you have the internet, you can go online and readily access copyright free images that you can use to draw. Many photographers are very kind and do put work and allow anyone to enjoy using them. And so I've got my light box and the photograph that I'm using is a picture of a hellebore that I took quite some time ago, uh, but I've always loved it. And it's quite an intricate flower, so I need to work on starting with my light box and get the basic shape, and then start to build up shading and shadow and dark and light to give me the sense that it's actually a double flower quite intricate and that I can see the form of the petals and just as we did curved strokes following the curve of our apple 
with the lines representing the veins and the direction of our petal. And we can just build up and build up in that way. Now you may have thought, well, tracing, that's cheating, that's not drawing. Well, if you want to think that that's cheating, then the likes of Caravaggio and Leonardo da Vinci could also be said to have cheated. Leonardo da Vinci developed the first light box. This is a device whereby an image is placed beyond a box. A very, very small aperture is created in the box and by the use of light and reflection we can project an image onto a canvas and then use that to form our outline. The image does appear upside down and inverted, but that's not a problem for an artist to just tell it over once he's got it done. And Leonardo da Vinci gave a very good explanation of how this was done in 1502. So even back then, artists were using anything that gave them help in order to produce an authentic piece of work that looked like what it was supposed to represent. Another thing that they used was a grid. And a grid would be placed between their canvas and them and the object that they were going to paint. And this would mean that they could draw a grid very lightly on their canvas or paper and they could then reduce the image to small sections and working from top to bottom or left to right or whatever, they could then do small sections which would be much easier. I can give you an idea of how that would have worked. Yeah. So we can see we've got small sections there and we can use that to create our art. Now we can find inspiration anywhere around and about us. You might say, keep raiding your fruit bowl or your fridge, or once we can get out and about again on your travels, you may see things that inspire you to have a go at drawing them. I was very inspired by this piece of stained glass that was standing in the garage at my brother in law it was quite grimy, it was, it's an old piece, but I was quite intrigued by the sense that the legging, the squares, drew a, a grid, once again that sense of a grid, that drew our eye, the lines of the grid, drew our eye to the central cartridge where the daffodils were. And I thought this was quite a good device to frame a main feature and to lead the eye in. So I thought I would be inspired by this and I would create a painting, a picture of some daffodils in a grid work and this is what the result was. Now I did mention the internet. If you have an iPad, you can actually, or indeed a mobile phone, you can actually draw on an iPad or any tablet, I should say, there are other tablets available. And um, you can draw direct onto a telephone or an iPad. And the lovely thing about doing that is that we actually don't produce any waste paper because you can draw all day long and when you decided if you decide it's good enough and you want to keep it then you can save it to your file or if you don't like it, you can erase it, or you can just delete it and get rid, and nothing's been wasted. Digital art is becoming quite popular, and you may perhaps feel that it's not proper art, it's not authentic, it's um, not real art. But there are many well-known artists who have graphic the technique of using digital art and indeed there are many artists who have only worked with digital art. One famous artist who has done some fabulous work with digital is David Hockney. We were very very lucky to go and see an exhibition of his 
just before lockdown. And this was a series of work that he had done digitally in the East Riding of Yorkshire in spring. And the colouring and everything is really quite super. He has made a really, really interesting and super job of them. Um, if you would like to see that exhibition and you have access to a computer, either at home or perhaps in the library once we can get there again, you might like to have a look. And um, if you would like to see it, then you can just go online, put David Hockney in digital art, and among many works that you have done, this will appear. If you just put digital art, then you will get lots of other artists and work that they have done. And I think you might be quite astounded at what can be created digitally. Now, if you've thought, well, I quite like the idea of being immersed in art, but I really, really don't feel like I'm, say, starting to learn to draw. I don't think I've got a steady enough hand or my eyesight isn't wonderful. Um, I think I would find it quite difficult. Well, you can actually get exactly the same benefits that we can get from drawing and painting and being immersed in any art. You can get the same benefits exactly using a colouring in book. This could be a child colouring in book or there are many, many books available now that are specifically aimed at adults. It has been found that colouring in is really beneficial to people who may have Alzheimer's and may be agitated and frustrated. And it's very calming, it can reduce our blood pressure and it is really, really good for us. So as I say, if you don't think or feel up to have it naturally set to and do a drawing, then think about doing some colouring in. We're coming to the time now when we're very, very much hoping that it won't be long before we can get back to Flower Club. We can hug our friends, it's been so long, hasn't it? We can go along with our flowers and do some practical flower arranging, take part in club competitions, exhibit at shows again, and just go along to our club and see somebody doing wonderful art up on the stage. But alongside that, or perhaps until then, you too might think, well, oh, yeah, I'm inspired. I think I'll find myself a pencil and paper, and you too might be drawn to nature. 